What's up guys, Aeronius here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today's video I'm just going to be going over the new Champion Fusion that's going to be coming out soon and talk a little bit about why I believe they should be having more uh, Companion Champions come to the game and it's just something that I am kind of passionate about is the Champions that are Companions and being able to have better abilities and basically it just creates a more synergistic value to your team and making your teams to be a lot better especially in arena and everywhere else in the game it makes you want to build out multiple champions as well so let's get into it i'm going to first go over the new champion and his name is nogoryu so let me pull them up on the screen right quick all right so as you can see nogoryu here is one he's going to be the one of the newer fusion champions that's coming to the game very soon so make sure you're prepping yourself for the new fusion Norgoryu has got some okay abilities here and Norgoryu is going to be an attack based champion so let me go ahead and read the abilities that he has going on for the A1 double commas he has attacks one enemy two times places an extra hit if this champions under an increased attack buff each hit has a 20% chance of placing block active skills for two turns that's an okay ability but honestly block active skills is really gonna be only good for like faction wars maybe some niche areas in you know arena or other minor areas of the game for waves but again block active skills is not gonna be the best abduct by night for the a2 Attacks one enemy, places a block buffs debuff for two turns, that's going to be okay for Hydra. Again, it's pretty weak, but uh, if this was attack all enemies and places block buffs, that would be fantastic for Hydra because there's a lot of people that are early game and mid game who still maybe don't have a good block buffs champion on their team to utilize. And if this champion's under an increased attack buff, steals all buffs from the target before attacking. So that's actually not a bad ability there. I do wonder if this guy is going to have good multipliers, which I don't know if he will have good multipliers, but we'll find out soon. On the A3, faster than the eye, pretty cool sounding ability, attacks all enemies, decreases the cooldown of this skill by one turn when attacking under an increased attack buff. So that's okay. You can use the cooldown of this own skill by one turn when attacking under an increased attack. Again, it's a five turn cooldown. Who knows if it's going to be brought down to a three turn or a four turn. I'm going to guess that it's going to be brought down to maybe a four turn cooldown at the lowest. And then hopefully he's under an increased attack buff. So if you pair him with Arbiter or if you pair him with other champions that can do increased attack, that'll be nice for Arena. The guy is sounding like he's going to be an arena champion, a little bit of Hydra, a little bit of Faction Wars. So he's so far he's reading okay. For his uh, A, so for his passive ability actually, places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for two turns whenever an enemy's HP drops below 30%, and this buff cannot be removed. So that's pretty cool, but his HP has to drop below 30%, which is pretty annoying. So I'm hoping that he actually can attack and do a lot of damage. So if he doesn't have a lot of damage and he drops below 30%, it might not be worth even building this guy or going for this guy. Uh, unless you're really early game or mid game and you're just looking for a better nuker for tag team arena, something like that. Other than that, if this guy doesn't smack, then it just isn't really worth going for him, especially if you've been playing the game for a while, which a lot of people at this point probably have been playing for a while or there might be a bunch of people who are newer coming into the game but I don't suggest going for this guy for a fusion if you're looking to get a legendary fusion right afterwards so if you're just looking to go for this guy because you want to go for every single fusion that's out there then sure go for it however if you want to save your resources this is probably the best time to save your resources for a fusion in order to save up for that really good legendary fusion in the future so let's get back to it. I'm going to start talking to you guys about why I believe they should be bringing more companion champions into the game and why maybe it would be nice to bring some more epic companions into the game or even buff epic older champions in the game. And I'm going to go over one pair of epic champions that are companions that I also believe should be buffed. Alright, so I just want to go over a pair of champions that I believe should be buffed in the game and let me just find them right now I believe they're in sacred order and you might know these this pair right now that are epic champions and that is Talia 
and Phoenix. Now, why do I think that Talia and Phoenix should be buffed, even though Phoenix is already really good and Talia is okay? I, I do believe that their synergistic uh, abilities, their capabilities when they're paired together is not the best. The reason why I say it's not the best is because he has this ability that decreases the bomb debuff detonation countdowns by one turn when Talia is on the same team. So he has to go slower than her. However, her ability that places bombs, it is on a three turn detonation cooldown. So having her on the team and actually trying her out, like for example, I tried this duo out against Bommel on normal. And on the high stages of normal, it's just not feasible anymore. So I really truly believe that to have their synergy be even better than it is now, this should be decreased to a two turn cooldown when Phoenix is on the same team and that Phoenix actually decreases it by one turn, dropping these bombs down to a one turn cooldown. To be quite frank with you, this ability in synergy with Phoenix is garbage, okay? Because the bombs take way too long to go off. It's okay in Faction Wars, but it's not that great. It's not to the point where I'm like, oh my god, this is a fantastic duo. Holy crap, you have to have them. No, this duo is not that good. Um, honestly, they're just it's just something that they should be buffing in the game. They should be buffing companions, making it making people want to actually go for companions and build companions more often. Now I know that they're bringing other things new to the game with the awakening, yada yada yada. Okay, let's be honest. I really have a feeling that Awakening is just going to be for those who are pay to win, you know, unfortunately, but it is what it is. That being, that being said, why are they pushing aside older champions and going towards the future when they're trying to also at the same time, why aren't they trying to bring in new players and, and when you're a new player, you're not looking at Awakening. You're not looking at something that's going to take a longer time to, to get to. Uh, most likely now I don't know for sure but some people just like to play the game because of specific champions I I really enjoy the game because I like building certain champions and building the synergy that champions have and to be able to mix and match champions on my team but I also really enjoy being able to have champions pair with each other to boost their abilities and stats but unfortunately it's only the legendaries that seem to have the best capabilities when they're paired together take for example venus and that other guy there where is he is he in sacred order as well cupidus so venus and cupidus have that insane ability where he actually was buffed and and you know he got this crazy ability with the hp burn on all enemies now and he hits even harder than before and he's actually super super annoying against the waves now on pve so He's, he's going to be the person you go against in Hard Doom Tower uh, in the high floors of the 100 plus and he's one of the most annoying champions now to face because of his synergy he has with, Fina, with Venus. So I don't know why they don't buff older champions. You know, there's another pair of champions that are in here too, I'm pretty sure. And also, why do they have so many Sacred Order and so many other champions that they keep bringing to the game, but they're not working on like lizard men and other skinwalkers like what's going on another pair of champions here for example is juliana i think juliana also yeah romero romero's garbage okay will ignore 50 percent of the target's defense when romero's on the same team who uses this duo does anybody out there use this duo i've never seen it in arena ever okay never i've i've been playing this game for almost three years and I am not joking when I say this. I have never seen this duo, Juliana and Romero, on the same team in almost in three years of playing. Almost three years of playing. That's kind of wild, right? They should be able to give a little TLC to those champions that are epic, uh, rather than just focusing on legendary champions. Legendary champions are very pay to pay to win heavy. You guys kind of get the gist. They're going for champions that uh, the whales will spend on, yada, 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 get it, whatever. Um, but for those people that are free to play out there, unfortunately, it's going to take you a long time to get those really good um, duo champions that are higher, higher level for you, those legendary champions. Again, basically, it's going to be more fun for the game if they build more 
companion champions. That's just my opinion. I also believe that having the companion champions will help bring other players into the player base, you know, maybe spice it up a little bit with the champions, you know, make it make it different, you know, make it so that you have to have companion champions on certain floors in secret rooms. Don't have the secret rooms always be the same. Switch them up. Make it so that you have to have two sets of companion champions on your team. That might be a crazy one, right? Now, obviously, free to play players is going to be more challenging for, but I bet you end game players might find that pretty interesting. Who knows? I know myself as a content creator playing this game for almost three years, I would be super excited to have a companion champion floor to have to deal with. Or maybe make some tournaments where you utilize companion champions to beat tournaments or events. Um, make it interesting. Don't just make it the same thing over and over. Fight someone with Skinwalker. Fight someone with this. Fight the spider with just Skinwalker team. All Skinwalker that pretty much nobody has an entire thing of Skinwalker's team unless you're endgame and paying to win. So, I don't know. I just feel like this would be a lot more fun of a game if they created more synergy with champions. Obviously, it's not the end-all be-all of the game, right? I just think that it would definitely help the game and make it a little bit more fun. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about companion champions. Should they bring more companion champions in the game? Should they buff companion champions? And then also, if you guys are going for the fusion, let me know in the comments below. Personally, I may end up skipping this fusion so I can save for the next fusion, but if I do decide to go for it, then tune in to my next videos that are coming soon, and I will be having a full-on episodic video, pretty much just like um, I did with Lanatharo the Fusion. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.